Welcome to Doozer Shop. I know it's been a while, but uh, I just wanted to film an update here and show you a little bit about what was going on. Kind of happy. I got the Brown and Sharp 13 put over by the window. Um, I'm really happy about the arrangement I got. Let me go up on my ladder and I can kind of show you uh, my shop layout of what I got. Hold on, let me go up on the ladder. Maybe not trip over anything. Climb up on the ladder here and give you guys a bird's eye. All right, this is the corner of my shop. Got the Red Boyer Schultz grinder. That stays put. Uh, that stayed put. Um, the Sugami lathe is all the way on the left, and that stayed put. But the Harding HLVH uh, moved. Uh, the Covell, the brown Covell in the background stayed put. Um, and I got the uh, Brown and Sharp 13 cylindrical grinder up against the window. And uh, in the middle of the shop, that's the Colchester lathe. Um, so I got it kind of all in this corner, tucked in nice. The, uh, the motor is in the, uh, the window of the, uh, the, the 13's uh, grinder wheel motor in the window it has nice uh, everything fits well I got about 21 inches between all machines and it's a nice little area I got to put a drop cord from the ceiling for the Harding HLVH but that's no big deal because I still got to do drop cords for the Colchester lathe and my boring mill so super happy about the utilization of space um, if you guys see my shop it's very packed and I was challenged to, uh, to put stuff uh, in, in places uh, and have good room to work around stuff. So I'm just ecstatic. And I'm, I'm, I know I'm talking a lot about it, but uh, oh, I even snuck the toolbox uh, back where it originally was, the Craftsman roll around. So I um, wanted to keep the Boyer Schultz in the corner, the surface grinder, because it slings grit. And I wanted to point that up against the wall, and in the corner it works really well. Um, and I just think everything is a great layout. Uh, I just was struggling to find a place for the Brown and Sharp 13. And, uh, and I got plenty of room. Let's go take a walk over there. And I'll give you some details uh, at the placement of all my, uh, my stuff around the 13. No, I'm going to the ladder up. Tripping and killing myself again. Yeah. And uh, everything I, I can move with a pallet jack in my shop. Um, and I got another pallet jack. Um, this is a short, narrow pallet jack, this crown, so that's super good. All right, um, there's the 13. The Sugami lathe stayed where I had it, um, coming like, you know, like a T shape off the wall. And the 13, the table. The table is so long, and then the travels are so long. Um, from the center each way, between the length of the table and the travel, um, you need 42 inches to the left and 42 to the right. Um, so that's like 84 inches total when the table moves to the extremes. So I got room there. Let me walk over here. The toolbox is behind it, so that doesn't interfere, and you got room there. Um, and the table, you can still open the drawers because it's behind it. And of course, it doesn't hit the, uh, the Boyer Schultz grinder. So, and I got some junk here on the cart for the, the Colchester lathe. I got an aisle here. Oh, this is nice. I got plenty of room between the Harding, HLVH, and the 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 brown and sharp and I got good room here between the controls of the uh, Tsugami lathe and the table um, for the 13 and as you can kind of see here I got the cabinet removed and I'm not going to use it for the electrical cabinet and the grinder wheel motor kind of goes in this uh, area on the windowsill and um, it seems to fit really good, really well. Um, gotta get the wheel on. I'm gonna make um, 
a, uh, a little uh, shelf here for the dust. And I've got a piece of metal broke that I'm going to make a shelf that comes out maybe four inches and up. And I got the, uh, the radius attachment on there to make sure that this little bearing area is not going to hit my, uh, my dust shield. So another thing I was going to do in addition to that, let me kneel down, is uh, I'm going to put, see it attaches on these little screws. There's a screw hole, a screw hole, and there's a few. So that's to attach the, uh, um, the dust tray. And you can see it, there's the bearing for the table uh, shaft. And it, it's not that deep. It's only like inch and a quarter. But it should clear the, uh, the bottom of that radius dresser. So I want to keep grit out of this area here. Um, so what I might do is put the tray on there, which will come out like four inches, and then sandwich between the tray and the machine where the screws are, I'm going to put like a, a piece of rubber sheet, and it's going to drape down and uh, come on both sides. And actually, I think, see, this is the nut to loosen, um, to adjust the turret, and I might put like a, a piece of sheet metal or a washer um, and adapt it to some rivets or screws or something to the rubber sheet. So it kind of stays on there, stays on there, and drapes down the side to keep the grit that doesn't get caught in the tray um, from going down in there. Um, I noticed that you know th this this copper line is uh, supplying the oil to the ways um, on the in-out slide, the Y slide, and from the V ways, oil comes to this side and dribbles down, and there's like a little trough in there you can kind of see where my finger is and I oil is supposed to return to the sump but I don't think that there's a hole um, in there to drain it back either that or there is a hole and I can't see it and it's clogged but I put a coat hanger a TIG wire back in there and I cleaned I mean I fished rags back and forth back and forth rags and shop tiles to get all the grit and nasty compressed air you know, remember you guys I had this all apart and and I can't, I don't think there's a, a hole in there for anything. So oil will drip down this side and the other side. And what I did is I got a tray, um, pardon the cord, under there, this rusty tray. And um, I got it up on blocks because they move everything with a pallet jack. So this tray should keep the floor clean from oil that dribbles down this side and, and the other side. So. So that's cool. Um, I'm going to get my digital readout, make a bracket for it, and I got the spar for the front. Um, I got to make a uh, finish the spar because it was crunched and I, I'm repairing it. But this one's on. I just got to make a bracket. Um, this is the wheel guard um, piece where the wheel guard attaches. There's holes here and here, I think for a light or something, but I might put a piece of angle iron on for these and then make a bracket that comes up for the, the lamp and the, um, the, v, the um, digital readout box. So um, so you can see, I think the last video, I didn't even have the motor together. Um, but I got the motor together, and I cut the shield. I cut this off here. This is the guard for the belt. And it covered you know, the rear um, pulley. And it was just so bulky. I, I just, I didn't. It, I just didn't like it. So I cut it. I saved the other piece, of course. Maybe it's sacrilege, but you know what? Who cares? It's my grinder. Oh, and I did not put the the cover. It's like a, a door that goes on the work head. And I like, I like the pulleys kind of open. And uh, looks less bulky because that big motor up there is so bulky. My buddy Mark is going to send me a motor that's smaller, and I might change it out. So we'll see what that's all about. And... and uh, I'm still planning on maybe doing the Harding spindle conversion, um, but anyhow, I got a piece of foam in the uh, where the you can see the lead screw in there for the elevation. It's a nice piece of dense foam, and I just cut it and stuffed it in there to keep any grit out of there. Um, I might put a piece of cardboard on the front with little magnets just to keep grit off of there. I'm never really going to adjust it, and of course, you know, I'm going to wipe it off if I ever, you know, get uh, to moving it for uh, doing other stuff. But um, so that's that. Um, I wanted to show you guys. Let's see. Okay, the, the, the toolbox stayed there. 
that grinder stayed there. The Covell, I've got to clean that up and get it going because the seal leaks. That's staying there. So, yeah, man, let me kind of, this is just a great little area. Um, everything fits. The only thing I kind of did is, is move the Harding HLV over here. And uh, I got a good aisle way. Um, actually, I put the handle on temporarily just to see my clearance. And I got a good good uh, aisle way here. So this video is just to kind of show you the little bit of layout I got going on. And I'm super happy with being able to fit the 13 over there. Um, I want to show you, I picked up a spindle. This is a Cincinnati um, number two tool cutter grinder um, ID spindle attachment. Um, so I've got a few things going on. It had a pulley on here. Uh, it was a tooth timing pulley I held on with this little roll pin. And uh, it was a weird pitch. I think it was six millimeter pitch and standard is either five or ten. Um, I got the labyrinth seal off there and the cover and the other labyrinth and I'm going to put some, uh, get some grease in there. But um, I've been exchanging information with a guy I met through eBay and he says that taper is a number six brown and sharp taper. And it's got a left handed thread, 5 sixteenths, 18, um, like drawbar thingy. Um, so I'm going to make some mandrels. Uh, for this, a nice gentleman to, to talk to uh, James uh, something in Georgia. So, cool guy. Um, got some brown and sharp parallels here. My buddy got these at a estate sale. I think they're 1 by 2 by 12 and they're a little rusty. Got them cleaned up. But I'm super stoked about this uh, Cincinnati spindle. Uh, my buddy Mark on Grand Island has got a spindle for his uh, Brown and Sharp 13. And I think he said it was from a Gallimire and Livingston grinder of some sort. Um, but this is Cincinnati and it, it, knew, it appears to be never used. I mean the paint on it is hardly chipped up at all. Very smooth. I still want to get a little bit of grease or oil uh, in these bearings. But that's going to go on the front of the 13 for doing ID work. And uh, let me go back over here. Um, it's supposed to bolt with a bracket on the, you know, the brown and sharp attachment to these slots. I might make a, a plate across here and bolt it to this so it's at the same height as the wheel. Um, the, uh, the spindle will be at the same height. So even though I got you know, the, the, the zero mark here, um, I don't want to have to adjust it you know, uh, for when I put the ID attachment on. We'll, we'll come up with that. Oh, and this, this uses seven brownish sharp, and it's not close to that. It's kind of close to a number two Morse taper, but I can, uh, I can fit the taper, make my own mandrel things, uh, no problem. Um, let's see here. Oh, got it plugged in. I got my switch wired up. That light comes on, and uh, maybe you guys can see. I got those uh, outlets on the back, four outlets. Um, one side is switched and one is constant. And uh, I got running that motor, which is the lubrication motor. And uh, that's, uh, that's going to be good because I'll turn that on. And uh, the, uh, the work head, you can hear it, comes on also. And uh, when I, you know, I got the oil dripping there, you can see it. I'm going to turn that off, the, uh, the work head will turn off too. And then the work head is off. So, so that's cool um, to use for that. And I got the light, and I, the, like I say, the other plug will be for the, you know, like a lamp and the dig digital readout. So uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick update. I got the brown and sharp 13 put together and put in a nice place in my shop. Got the control panel off of it, and I'm just gonna um, plug into my uh, the VFD here, which I use for my uh, Boyer Schultz grinder. And you can see it just plugs in um, either to that grinder or it's gonna plug into the uh, the motor for this. And then, like I said, the lubrication another thing is just 110 plug in the wall. So. 
Till next time, do your shop.